Need some clarity on election issues? Join us on Constituency Watch. This and every Monday to Friday at 10 p.m. Constituency Watch. Showing on Joy News only on Multi TV. Welcome to a primetime news. Here we bring you comprehensive news you can track from across the country and across the globe. Top of the news tonight, NPP accuses Dr. Tony Edu of wrongly purchasing and re-registering a state Ford expedition vehicle with presidential, presidential specifications at a price of 6,200 Ghana CDs. And Kolebu CEO says former Vice President Aliu Mahama may be flown outside Ghana for medical attention. And juvenile diabetes on the increase. Worldwide statistics show diabetes kills one person every eight seconds and a limb loss every 30 seconds. And in business, Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana maintains the policy rate at 15%. On the international scene, Sierra Leone goes to the polls on 17th November this year to elect a new president, parliament and local councils. My name is Kemini Nyamani Amano. Stay with me for details and many more. So in our first story, the Greater Accra and Western regions recorded the most election risk incidents between October 15 and 30 this year. This was contained in a CDD Ghana report on conflict monitoring exercises conducted in 40 constituencies across the country. In all, the Center for Democratic Development recorded a total of 84 election risk incidents in 39 of the 40 constituencies that were chosen for its conflict monitoring on grounds of violent activities recorded there in the past. About 320 communities in 40 constituencies were visited during the collection of data. The exercise aims at reducing drastically incidents of violence in the forthcoming polls. The reports were based on historical trends of conflict and electoral violence, prevailing security realities, and the nature of electoral competitiveness. Northern, Upper East and West, and Volta were clustered within the security zones. Swing, or competitive zone, comprises Brongahafo, Great Accra, Western, Central and Eastern. In terms of traditional strongholds or chieftaincy and land disputes, the Ashanti and Volta recorded some gains. Some of the election risk factors are defacement of posters which recorded 77%, physical harassment, threat of violence, disputes, boycotts of upcoming general elections, among others. Ten victims were recorded in total. The most serious harm is said to have occurred in the Bonahafu region. 
as a community called Gosu in the Brongahafu, you have an MPP activist who was attacked with a cutlass um, by an NDC adherent. Uh, similarly, in the Chiponi um, constituency, an individual from the Nansuni community sustained injuries to his head when he was beaten by NPP supporters in the community for cutting down the party flag. Defacement of posters was most frequent occurring in 26 constituencies. Intemperate language use was second in 11 constituencies. Rumors and allegations secured third position in nine constituencies, followed by verbal harassment in seven constituencies and physical harm placed fifth and in seven constituencies. All these happened between 15th to the 30th of October. Despite Ghana's democratic credentials, incidents of violence continue to characterize voting processes. So what's the way forward? How should a state respond to recommendations of this report? Uh, the increase of the constituencies from 25 of 208 to 40 does not in any way mean that we've had uh, more constituencies than in 208 that are, are, are flashpoints. Uh, it, it, it does mean that in 208 we're experimenting. If you really want to do a thorough work, you shouldn't overwhelm yourself with so many constituencies, then you will not be able to do thorough analysis. But all the environment report this year as compared to 208 show improvements. Meanwhile, from the, con the content of the first conflict monitoring report, CDD Ghana and Kodeo have made some recommendations aimed at fostering peace and unity among the electorate. CDD and Kodeo have begun a sensitization program on the legal implications of tampering with posters, flags and billboards and have started the training of some 4,000 personnel who will transmit reports on our polling station on December 7. Most discussions on politics generate controversies that in turn creates conflict. Especially political talk show hosts to be firm in the moderation of their programs and also insist that panelists follow set down rules and regulations. Again, sympathizers and supporters of political parties who have the opportunity of making public statements should refrain from making statements that will inflame passions. PNK Abraham Pamensa says debates form part of the core measures to address conflicts. We are doing what we call parliamentary candidates debates in 30 constituencies across the country. We did PASA, we did ADENTA. Yesterday we were at uh, Ododio constituency. We also do uh, what we call peer education. Uh, we've trained 15 young ladies uh, to 15 selected districts who started in July, and they are doing what we call door-to-door -door education on so many issues. CDD Ghana Peace Campaign messages are put on mediums and aired especially in 10 regional capitals with focus on tolerance. You go to remote places, even the community radio stations, you see education going on. So when we keep it that way, we cover, we report, we shame, I think we will not have more problems that we witness in 2008. CDD Ghana on the election day itself revisits the parallel vote tabulation, PVT, a system that helps in easy collating of results from the various polling stations on election day. A result is not uh, doctored. It's results that have been verified in the various constituent uh, polling stations that both party agents and electoral officers have endorsed that they test straight to us. When, as soon as they test that, it hitches our screen. We have a technology at the command center. We are setting up a Kodio observation command center, as we did in two, it at the Kofi Annan Center, where we think we have maximum security. And we have a place we call Strong Room. So we have the technologies there being supported by National Democratic Institute, or NDI. They are bringing us all the technological machines. So as soon as you test and it hits the machine, it tablets automatically. CDD Ghana seeks to support and promote the development of free and peaceful and well-governed society based on rule of law, integrity, public administration and equal opportunity for all. Now, a member of the NPP communication team, Sami Ewuku, has accused Dr. Tony Edu of wrongly purchasing and re-registering a state vehicle, which is a Ford expedition with presidential specifications at a price of 6,200 CDs from licensed auctioneers Shogo 
ventures. Following the payment, Dr. Tony Edu on September 30, 2011, wrote to the Commissioner, Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, to facilitate change of ownership and re-registration of the vehicle. Now, Samir Wuku made these allegations at a press conference held by the party. Represented full payment for the vehicle bought on auction from the office of the president. Dr. Tony Yedu, who has been holding himself as the apostle of integrity uh, and also uh, the moralist in the Mahama Misatha government, who flood the rules of our country, fraudulently manipulate documents of state, then misrepresents to the DVL, another agency of state, apply for a vehicle, part of the presidential fleet of cars, to be sold to him, auctioned to him, at a ridiculous price of 6200 for a presidential spec, Ford Expedition presidential spec, of presidential spec, be sold to him at that price. We found this strain also in the age-long practice. The car should be a saloon car. It should be two years and above. And when you are exiting office, that is when you can request for it to be sold to you. One, the car in question is a 4 by 4 And the car in question, Tony Edu, has not spent that two years before he applied for that vehicle. The car is not part of the cars that is allowed for it to be auctioned to state officials when they are exiting. And for Tony Edu, who called uh, appointees of the then NPP administration as nation wreckers, corrupt people, looting brigade, himself to blatantly uh, flout these rules. It's very strange. Official document available to the People Must Know Forum indicates that the head of policy evaluation and oversight unit of the office of the president, just as he did in 2000, has once again used the position of his high office to dupe the people of Ghana by grabbing for himself a BMW car which became topical after paying 200 Ghana cities for it. These are documents of state. These are public records. He hasn't denied. These are documents from the Ghana Revenue Authority. Uh, you know, and these, that's the form C from the DVLA, which has his picture attached to it. <laughs> these documents are more than genuine. We have thrown in the first salvo. He should come and respond. We wish him well because there's also another thing about him, where he sold the state land to himself. So the heat is on. This is just the beginning. A luta continua, Victoria Seta. The statement asked for a car with a street value of more than 60,000 Ghana cities. Can Dr. Edu look into the face of Ghanaians and justify his action? So joining us by telephone is Dr. Tony Edu. And good evening, sir. Good How true are these allegations? That I bought a car and bought a tradition? Yes, I did. At, at 6,200 Ghana cities? That's right. Uh, it, it's, it's, how, how, how is this? I beg your pardon? How, how is this? Um, could you explain to us? The, the NPP is alleging that... Uh, this is not supposed to be uh, the price at which the car is, is to be bought. The MDP is the value of cars that have been boarded for reasons of uh, not being roadworthy. Uh, and they are the ones who value uh, cars which are not roadworthy. First of all, let's get some facts into a perspective. This car was part of a fleet of cars that were advertised for public auction. The advertisement appeared in the Ghanaian Times. I called the auctioneer, and the auctioneer took me to where the cars were parked. The cars were parked at a private workshop called Zbani Limited, S-B-A-N-I, Zbani Limited, at Sakumano. It was when I got there that I realized that these cars were coming from the castle, because I recognized one car that was the bulletproof car, which I believe former President Rollins was using. Mm. 
Mm. And these cars have been left for a very long time and they were deteriorated. The car in question that I am supposed to have bought below value did not have a functional gearbox and a functional air conditioning system. Its front windscreen was cracked and the back windscreen was also cracked. The bodywork had deteriorated with the effect that even water was seeping into the seat. <clears throat> the auctioneer assured me that he could get me a gearbox and get a mechanic who can more or less restore the transmission system. The mechanic did get me a gearbox, which I paid for. And I also ordered part for the rehabilitation of the newly acquired gearbox. Uh, which means the you, car you, was you must... Evaluated. Right. The car was evaluated by the State Transport Corporation by the auctioneer himself. Mm. At no point in time did I apply to anybody at the capital or any government authority to purchase a car for which a car was allocated to me. This was a car that was sold in public up up after it has been duly advertised by an auctioneer been, whose services have been engaged. Um, documentations including even the authority to evacuate the car from where it was after the sale and purchase agreement had been made mm. was done. The director of transport at the council has more or less provided this authorization and at the appropriate time the documentations will be made. Now, I've heard things like fraudulently manipulating. These are very defamatory acts by people who are so reckless that they get information and they will not even investigate. An application to the DVLA for change of ownership and re registration of the vehicle was sent by me as I am entitled legally to do. Mm. And if somebody at the DVLA doesn't know how I came to acquire the car and he believes that this was a serviceable car that was sold to me, and let the person come to court and give testimony. But those who have gone public today, Mm. They impugn my integrity and say all kinds of things about me manipulating the system and so on and so forth. Would we'll also have a case to answer. This is not a matter of political right. rhetoric. It right. is a matter of facts and evidence. So, Dr. Edu, I've apparently cost you to um, put uh, the, the, the car back into shape. How much, how much are we looking at? Oh, quite a lot. Can you imagine a complete gearbox for a Ford Expedition car, uh, uh, a restoration of an air conditioning system, replacement of front and back windscreens, even the acquisition of seats, spare tires, and so on and so forth. And, and, and putting and a figure to it. People claim that the, 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 the value of the car today is 60000 The question that they must answer is, how do people who are claiming to have a sentence of public duty allow a car of that value to stand as a private workshop to deteriorate? Right. With the right. P putting a figure to it, how much would you say it cost you? Access to public auction. Dr. Edu? Yeah. Put putting a figure to it, how much would you say it cost you to revamp this car? Oh. 
The relevance of this question is to the accuracy of the valuation that people who are ignorant of the condition of the car are putting. I don't see any relevance. If we go to court and the court determines that I pay the price that is unconscionable, then I will bring my case of expenditure. But so far, we are dealing with a, a lot of ignoramuses who, for political reasons, are more or less mentioning figures and things that they have no idea. I've heard Sami Awuku or whatever his name is say that, in principle, uh, four-wheel drives are not sold to public offices. This is not a duty car for which a public officer has applied to purchase. This is a car that has been boarded and has been put on the market for disposal because it has been declared unserviceable. I was not a person who declared a car unserviceable. I was not the auctioneer. I was not the one who advertised for public auction of the vehicles. I was not the valuer. Right. I was no. not the one who gave the authorization. Do Dr. Aidu. Now, the, the NPP also alleges that you have used your office to get the car at 6,000. I use my office? 6,200. Six what, what I want to find out from you, Dr. Edu, is could an ordinary person be in at the auction and probably got the car at 6,200 CDs? I use my office to determine the value of the car. Uh, apparently, they, they, they claim... Uh, so if they say, you can, you can immediately see that if a private official value or an independent official value, like the state transport cooperation, is asked to value a car, mm. and I have no contact with the state transport cooperation, so and the value is put on the car, where from my abuse of us? So could, ha could, could, could an ordinary person have bought I mean, this I mean, Ford? Could an ordinary person have bought this Ford yes, at, at 6,200? Because I saw the advertisement in the Ghanaian Times. Right. Th thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking to Dr. Tony Edu. And he's been reacting to comments from the NPP over uh, alleged buying of a state Ford expedition uh, with presidential specifications at a price of 6000 200. Moving on with the news. A week ago today, the Achimota branch of Malcolm came crashing down on unsuspecting workers and some early shoppers killing 18 and injuring several others. However, the incident once again threw the spotlight on the Ghanaian hospitality as scores of volunteers risked their lives to rescue people from the rubble. Would you risk your life to save another under such circumstances? Matilda Nyakwa Dennis spoke to one of the rescue volunteers about his experience. John Mauli Nyadigbe is a graduate of Zion College and Loga. With a slim physique and brave heart, he is one of the volunteers who entered the collapsed building, sometimes crawling in and out of crevices and holes just to save lives. When he heard the news of the collapse, he tells me he was on his way to town but had to abandon everything to dash to the site to help save lives. Some of us, we have the heart to help. Even though the police were preventing me, the military men were even using belts to ship me, but I told them that I'm here to do the work of God. Let me do what I'm here for. Oh, the first time when I was about to enter the first hole, I was somehow scared, but I don't know what came into me. I just tell myself that you can do it. Because I'm somebody, if you tell me that somebody fly from up here and landed on the ground, since somebody has been able to do it, I don't care. I also go there and land on the ground. I asked him what his lowest moments were and his greatest fears during his rescue operation. Okay, what I saw over there that disturbed me was the pregnant woman who I saw under there, who the stomach burst. And the baby, you see that the fetus was somewhere around. But when I saw it first, I became frightened. But I told myself that I heard a voice at the back of the, the pregnant woman who I was willing to go and save that person. Even though this person is already dead, so I was not thinking about the, that one anymore. But when I came out, 
my body was shivering because of what I saw over there. After that person, there was another one who was a lady who was, uh, the pillar fell over her, on her, at her back. But behind her, we were hearing a voice who was speaking, a, 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 a female person who was speaking the gun language, that she's begging us, we should come and help her. But over there, we have two boys over there where we are supposed to save. One's arm was on the lady who was dead. But the arm that was on, there was a boxes that covered the arm. That was where the hand was there. So we used pure water and knife to cut those papers over their face. When we were able to cut the papers, the hand came. We forced the hand to come. We were just chatting with him that we will not remove him. Something to make him feel that he will not, we are not going to save him. So that he will not concentrate on what we are doing. So that the arms will not pay him when we are doing so that he will cry. So when we were just telling him, his brother was around, who was also joking with him by then. So by the time we realized, we just tell him that he should just calm down and close his eyes. Whilst he was about listening to what we are saying, one guy was there who put the arm out. So when we pulled him out, there was another guy also over there who So said, his life was saved. His life was but saved. Even just one person, two people that were dead, that I was, it's, it pains me that they, I've saved them before they are dead. That's the manager and one girl over here, Comfort. That even the pillar fall on her, but we've managed to remove her. But Yesterday, I saw the obituary that she was dead. So what was his motivation? Me, if my single life can save three people, I'll continue to do it. If the building had collapsed at night, there would have been no casualties. But it could have been worse if it collapsed during peak shopping hours between midday and late afternoon. It would have been even more terrible if volunteers like Mauli and several others had withheld their help. Whilst we are going under there, people at the top are also working. And uh, you can see that this thing is not strong. It can crack any time. So it's by God's grace. But even though I, uh, the next day when I went home to see what was happening in the house, it went over there. But over here, when it's about to be, my big man was asking us that we should go and get a very big canopy so that we can cover that place. But we can see that not, even, not a, a single uh, uh, raindrop dropped over here that day so that it will affect anything. It was by the, after saving all the lives before we see that it's rained over here because if we go there if it can even last at most it's 20 minutes it was a painful tragedy but Mauli believes the invisible hand of god was present for joy news matilda nyakuma dennis report Well, we are grateful for people uh, like uh, John Maori. Now, moving on, diabetes is documented as one of the silent killer diseases, claiming one life every eight seconds and a limb lost every 30 seconds as a result of diabetic complications. The situation is becoming more worrisome as the rate of juvenile diabetes is becoming more alarming with type 1 diabetes growing at an annual rate of approximately 3%, which is 23% increase in eight years among children and children young adults. Diabetes is a chronic and devastating global public health threat that currently affects 366 million people. Persons with the condition have high blood sugar levels because their bodies cannot process it into fat to be stored for energy. This occurs because either the pancreas cannot make enough insulin or cells are unable to respond to insulin normally or both. People suffering from diabetes are also said to experience a multiplicity of medical conditions including cardiovascular impairment, physical disability, and in severe cases, death. Even though there is inadequate research findings on the specific causes of the disease, pointers including lifestyle, unbalanced diet, obesity, lack of physical exercise among others, constitute some of the predisposing factors to developing diabetes. In Ghana, the prevalent type is the type 2 diabetes, but currently the rate of the type 1 diabetes is alarming as more children, teens and young adults are now being diagnosed of it. We have the children also having type 1 diabetes. And I'm saying it's important because uh, I'm taking care of uh, a family of four and two of the children, four children, family of four children, and two of the children have type 1 diabetes. So you just imagine, even though we say the prevalence among the general population is 5% of the whole uh, diabetes population. If you have three children and two of them has, uh, two of them have diabetes, it is like it's hundred percent to you, and because of this, it's important. We are not diagnosing them. As efforts are being made to reverse the current trend and improve the awareness of diabetes, as the world celebrates Diabetes Day, there are also a number of challenges faced by people living 
with a condition. A significant number of diabetic patients lack access to proper treatment and medicines. We've now got more diabetes centers. Apart from that, two glucometers are expensive. The strips are very expensive because they pay import duties on them. Insulin, for instance, most of the time there is shortage. The health insurance can't afford them. If we can come to a consensus where we, they can include most of our insulin and things on the health insurance. If even they give the insulin, the syringe and the lancets, which the person uses every day, is not included in the health insurance. November is Diabetes Awareness Month to create awareness, educate, save and improve the lives of millions of people. This year's celebration is under the theme, Protect the Youth, Our Future. As a result, the youth and the public in general have been advised to adapt healthy lifestyles to prevent diabetes. Away from that, as world media reports spread that former Vice President Aliu Mahama had passed on, the Chief Executive Officer of Kolibu Teaching Hospital uh, said categorically that he is not dead, but rather in critical condition. Professor Ni Otu Nate earlier this evening spoke to our reporter Etonam Say. Let me inform Ghanaians that the former vice president is well and on admission at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Although he's been here for some time, uh, his condition is critical. And our doctors, a team of doctors from various units of the hospital are working on him and we hope we are sure he will pull through this current situation. All right, so exactly when was the last time you checked on him? You know, because we, we are getting the information from close family sources. So exactly when was the last time you checked on him? I was in the ward about five minutes ago, and I saw him. He's alive. Uh, there, is no, there is no truth to what you hear on the media currently. If his condition is critical, what exactly is his con what, what, what is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? Well, I, I will leave it at uh, that uh, point. Uh, I don't, we will not devote um, our patient condition to the public. Uh, that is between the doctors and the, the family. Okay, um, if someone is on life support, what does it mean? Um, being on life support means you, um, we, it, it's, it's, it's a, a situation which is uh, a bit difficult to explain, but we have equipment that can keep you um, breathing and when your body takes over, then um, we, we take the, um, the equipment off. But yes, um, we can. We have the equipment that supports an individual when who has had, uh, who is critically ill, and uh, that is what we are doing. So it means that uh, his, he has breathing problem at the moment. Yes, he has breathing problem, and that is being taken care of. Okay. Um, why would someone want to rumor that uh, the former vice president is dead when he is not dead? That that's why I'm I'm very surprised at that because. Uh, I don't, I don't expect anyone to go out with such a rumor. Uh, but you know, in Ghana, um, a lot of these rumors have gone around before, and this is why I'm here with you, so that I will inform all Ghanaians that uh, the former vice president is still alive, and we are working very hard to make sure that we get over this difficult stage. In business reports tonight, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana has maintained the policy rate at 15%. Acting Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Kofi Wampa, cited worsening global economic conditions, exchange rates, pressures, and inflation as some of the reasons the Central Bank decided to maintain the figure at 15%. 
Assistant Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Kofi Wampa, first gave an outlook the world's economy and the impact it was having on the country's economy. Global headline inflation declined, driven by slackened growth in economic activity and lower economic uh, commodity prices. In advanced countries, headline inflation reduced to 2% in August from 2.9% at the beginning of the year. In emerging markets and developing economies, headline inflation also reduced, uh, continued to decline. Inflation in China reached 22% in August from 4.6% at the beginning of the year. It is projected that headline inflation in advanced economies could decline further as inflation pressures continue to ease. On the local economy, Dr. Wampat said the country's economy has slowed down in year-on-year -year terms to 5.4%, compared with 7.7% in June and 21.7% last year. The major contributory components to the slowdown in growth were cement sales, contribution to SNIT and exports. However, these were mitigated by growth in private sector credit, industrial electricity consumption, and port activities. These factors and many more, he indicated, were reasons the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana decided to maintain the policy rate at 15%. The business and consumer confidence indices suggest improved sentiments on exchange rate and inflation expectations. Credit to the private sector continued to expand, providing additional impetus for economic growth. The committee is of the view that the risk to inflation and growth are fairly balanced and has therefore decided to maintain the policy rate at 15%. Government, meanwhile, is seeking to end the year with single-digit inflation while strengthening the CD, which has so far appreciated by 0.5% against the U.S. dollar. Meanwhile, inflation is set to have declined in October. The year-on-year -year inflation rate for the month stands at 9.2%, down from the 9.4% recorded in September at this year. This, the Ghana Statistical Service has attributed to bumper food harvest and stability in the month under review. This rate of inflation for the month under review is the percentage change in the consumer price index over a 12-month period from September 2011 to October 2012. The rate of increase in general price levels slowed down marginally by 0.2 percentage points in October compared to September. We find that in October 2012, the year-on-year -year inflation rate was 9.2%, down by 0.2 percentage point compared to the figure of 9.4% recorded for September 2012. The monthly change rate for October 2012 was negative 1.0% compared to the negative 1.5% recorded for September 2012. Acting government statistician attributed the downfall trend of inflation to the prevailing season of abundant harvest and the CD, which has remained stable for some time. At the regional level, the inflation rate changed from 6.6% in the Volta region to 11.0% in the central region. For the 10 regions of Ghana, we find that consistently uh, the central region has been recording the highest combined food inflation rate and non-food inflation rate. When we look at the combined food inflation rates, we have central region recorded, recording an inflation rate of 11.0%. And among the regions, we have the Volta region recording the lowest combined food and non-food inflation rate. Apart from Central, Ashanti and Greater Accra, Northern region also recorded rates above the national average of 9.2%.
Selling business, Gehak Distilleries, producers of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages, has begun an expansion and modernization project expected to be completed in the second quarter of 2014. And this was revealed to journalists at the company's annual general meeting here in Accra. When completed, this modernization program will quadruple production to enable the company improve its market share in the alcoholic beverage industry and also improve stakeholder returns. Established in 1958, Gehawk Distilleries Limited was part of the erstwhile Ghana Industrial Holdings Company Limited. Some of the company's popular brands are Castle Bridge Dry Gin, Mandingo Bitters, Herba Freak Bitters and Kaiser Snaps. According to Managing Director K. Kwao Simmons, the current board of directors who assumed office in April 2010 at the time, the company was on the verge of being diversified, have chalked significant successes. These include the ongoing modernization and expansion of the factory in line with ISO certification, installation of automatic bottle washing plant to infuse efficiency of operations and installation of fully automated bottling lines together with pets and touch lines. A tour of the company also revealed a new sales and personal company bank as part of the expansion project. And in the segment, workers across the European Union are staging a series of protests and strikes against rising unemployment and austerity measures. General strikes in Spain and Portugal have halted transport businesses and schools and led to clashes between police and protesters in Madrid. That's it for the segment. Uh, let's check out smart investment and the market data. Now for sports, my name is Rashida Kadiri. Good evening. Ghana is winning at the University of Lisbon in Portugal in an international friendly against Cape Verde. It's about 90 minutes as we speak, and it's Mubarak Wakaso who put the Black Stars ahead over Cape Verde. Now, away from that, Ghana International Emmanuel Ajiman Bedou has been nominated for the 2012 Pushkas Award. The award instituted by World Football yes, Governing Body Adjim FIFA is to and in other news, player. Ghana Black Starlets are currently in South African capital Johannesburg preparing for the first leg of the final round of the qualifiers for the 2013 Africa Youth Championship and the 17th level to be hosted in Morocco. The team left Accra yesterday. Saturday's game will be the team's first appearance in their qualifiers after advancing to the next stage without kicking a ball following Gambia's withdrawal. The Ghana under-17 male team have been impressive in their warm-up friendlies and are expected to book qualification to the tournament, which they missed out at the last edition. Pakwisi Fabian is head coach of the Black Starlets and he is confident Ghana will beat South Africa on Saturday. Well, we know they are, they are the type that play this Simba type of, the type of football. Uh, pass, 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 pass. So we are, we are, we've, we've found an antidote, we've got a strategy. Uh, to counter that kind of play. So we are, I think uh, we, are, we are well prepared for it. Thomas Japon is captain of the side and he is sure the time is well prepared for the task ahead. We are fully prepared because yesterday we played our game, it's our training game, and we are looking to what the coaches want us to play, the system we are going to play. And I think to our perspective, we played it very well and we won the six game. So we are really fully, fully confident in ourselves that we are going to do well. We are really ready for it because this is what we have been training for since January. 
this is what everyone is born to do. So we are really focused and confident in ourselves that we could do it. Yeah. Ghana must beat South Africa over two legs in order to progress to the next stage of Africa and the 17 Youth Championship qualifiers. The finals will be played in Morocco from April 13 to 27 next year. Right, so there are lots of friendly matches going on around the world and some results that I have now. Korea Republic 1, Australia 2. South Africa nil. Zambia, champions of the African Cup of Nations, uh, defending champions, they have scored South Africa by goal 2 nil. Israel 1, Belarus 2. Chile nil. Serbia 3. And it's half time in the game between Sweden and England, and it's England who are out by two goals to one. Italy and France are drawing 1 1. And remember, the Black Stars of Ghana are one goal ahead of Cape Verde. The game is currently ongoing at the University of Lisbon in Portugal. That will do it for sports. Coming up next is international news. Stay tuned.